Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an upcoming Android tablet from Blackview. Now this should be released in the next couple weeks, but this is known as the Blackview Tab 9. I actually had no clue that Blackview made tablets. They do make some rugged phones and some of them look pretty cool. Some of them have night vision built in, some of them have FLIR cameras built in. And overall, that's really where I knew Blackview from, but they do offer a line of tablets, and this is their brand new upcoming Tab 9, and on paper it looks like a decent 10-inch budget tablet. So inside of the box, we're obviously going to get the tablet itself, it does come with a folio case. They will be offering a few different color options, but I think I got their rose gold version here. This thing does feel beefy, it's got some weight to it, and hopefully it's due to that bigger battery inside of this thing. Now along with the tablet itself, we're also going to receive our user manual, semi-jet tool, we get some 3.5mm headphones, USB Type-C to full-size USB, and our wall charger. So I've had a couple days to mess around with this tablet, and I'm actually surprised by the build quality and the performance of this little tablet here. It definitely outperforms something like the Amazon Fire 10, but it's falling short from the higher-end tablets like the Samsung Tab S7 or even the Tab S6. But for a budget device, I think we're getting some outstanding performance out of this little tablet. The Tab 9 has dual stereo speakers built in, and they're also going to be offering a keyboard attachment that magnetically attaches to the side here with those five pogo pins. This is 4G capable, so we do have a SIM tray slash SD card tray over here, and they've left the 3.5mm audio jack, and I'm actually a big fan of the placement of this, because usually when I'm using a 10-inch tablet like this, it's in portrait mode, sitting sideways, and I'm holding it on both sides, this way that jack doesn't get in the way when I have my headphones plugged in. And finally, over here on this side, we have our power button, volume rocker, and our USB Type-C for charging. As for the specs of the Blackview Tab 9, for the CPU we have an Octa-Core Unisoc Tiger T610. This is actually a chip I haven't tested yet, but Unisoc has been coming out with some really nice budget CPUs lately. We have 6 A55 cores at 1.9 GHz and 2 A75 cores at 1.9. The GPU is a Mali G52 MP2. We have 4 GB of RAM, 64 GB of internal storage with micro SD card support. This also packs a 7400 mAh battery and they're claiming up to 6 hours of gaming on this device. For the display, we have a 10.1 inch IPS fully laminate and 1920 by 1200 and it's running a customized version of Android 10. This is Blackview's new operating system that I think they'll be porting over to some phones and their newer tablets coming up, known as Doke OS. Overall usability has been really great, everything's been super smooth, and like I mentioned, this is Doke OS. It's basically just kind of a little bit of a reskin version of Android 10. There's not a lot of customization going on here, at least that I can see on the outside of the operating system. It looks pretty plain Jane to me, but you know, this is version 1.0, so it might get better in the future. We do have full access to Google Play without any kind of mods or anything like that. I've got a bunch of stuff that I want to test here. We're going to run some benchmarks, test out some native Android games, some video playback, and some emulation. Alright, so first things first, video playback. This has more than enough power to play 1080p 60 videos. It'll even do 1440p 60, but unfortunately we only have a wide find level of 3. So Netflix is going to be stuck with the phone version here. I really wish these manufacturers would get on board with Widevine certification because it would definitely make these tablets a lot more desirable to some people. Now when it comes to YouTube video playback, we get some really good performance here, and even with the stock version of YouTube, we can go up to 1080p, go full screen with it, we're at 1080p 60, and it works just fine. And I gotta say, these dual stereo speakers sound really good. You can jack it all the way up and it doesn't distort at all. I also ran a few benchmarks. First up, we have Geekbench 5 with a single core score of 361 and a multi of 1336. I really wasn't impressed with the single core here. Next on the list, 3D Mark Wildlife, which is a Vulcan GPU benchmark with a 511, and finally, 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme, which tests OpenGL ES 3.1 performance, coming in with an 1115. Overall, not impressive benchmark scores, but we still gotta see how this thing handles games. Starting off light here, we have Minecraft Pocket Edition you can use the built-in screen or connect a Bluetooth controller. And uh, yeah, it works great. I mean, there's really not much more that I can say about this. I'm set to 12 chunks. At 16, I did notice a little bit of lag. But at 12, it's playable and it's an enjoyable experience, but this is an easier one to run, so let's take it up a notch. 
Next on the list, we have Call of Duty Mobile, and it's running great on this little device. This is a very well optimized game. I have the frame rate set to high and the graphics on medium, but uh, like that, it still looks good, and we're getting great performance out of it. And finally, for native Android gaming, we have Genshin Impact. Getting a lot of stutters here, even set to 30 FPS lowest settings. I knew this was going to happen going into it, because this is definitely a harder one to run, and you will notice more lag when there's lots of effects on screen or more than four characters. Moving over to some emulation, first up we have Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator upscaled to 1280 by 960 and it's running great. FPS is up in the top left hand corner. N64 is another one that runs well on this device. I'm using the standalone version of Mupin 64 AE from the Google Play Store and this is 007 Goldeneye. Here's some PSP using PPSSPP, Tekken Dark Resurrection, no hacks, no frame skip, 2x resolution, running great. So the easier to run games will run fine at higher resolutions, but with the harder to run stuff like Chains of Olympus, you will have to drop this down to 1x, but here it is running without any frame skip, and it's doing a decent job. I was really surprised that we were able to get this kind of performance out of this game. And finally, for emulation, we have some GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. It's really trying its hardest here to run Soul Calibur 2 at full speed, but unfortunately you just don't have the power to push all these GameCube and Wii games. I'm sure there's a couple GameCube games that would run pretty decently on this device, but I wouldn't go out of my way to specifically buy one of these tablets for GameCube emulation. So overall, for a budget device, it's really not that bad, and as the price goes on this, Word on the street is this is going to be going for 150 It would be worth that if you don't want to spare the extra change to buy something like an S6, maybe a refurbished one, or even throw some more money at an Android tablet and get an S7. I mean, those are the best performers on the market. But if you're looking for a budget option, and this really does come out of the gate at 150 I think this would be an excellent choice over something like the Amazon Fire Tablet 10. Now, we'll have to wait until the 2021 version comes out, and hopefully we do get some really good specs with that. But when it comes down to the Blackview Tab 9, going into this, I thought I would see much worse performance. And this was actually surprising, given that they're not a tablet manufacturer. They mainly do rugged phones. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. I personally really like the screen, getting decent performance for a budget device, and the build quality is excellent. If you're interested in learning more about this, I will leave a link to Blackview's website in the description. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this device, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.